Hello, hello everyone. It's Michelle at Serendipity House. Uh, you're joining me right now on the DIY paint page uh, for the uh, Easter Live Marathon that's going on until 9 o'clock tonight with all of the retailers. And um, we all have chosen a project that um, to remake something that is under $20. So I have what I think is going to be lots of fun. Say hello when you come on. I'm going to just try to find myself here so I can see your comments. Has anybody had a chance to watch the um, videos today? They've been going all day since 11. I have been so crazy busy. I have not had a chance to even get on Facebook really until now. But if you're like me and have had the same is issue, found myself here, swipe left. Hi, Serafina. I'm my first live today. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so all the videos from today, if you did miss them like I did, then they're all going to be stored on the DIY page under videos. Like all the videos ever done, I'm pretty sure, except for maybe the YouTube videos are all right there. So you can go through uh, instead of watching TV, <laughs> unless it's Game of Thrones or something. All right, I'm all set. So what we're doing today is we are going to take a sap bucket and transform it with DIY paint and an IOD transfer. And um, I don't know, for around here, I live in New Hampshire, so sap buckets, um, we can find them for, you know, four to ten dollars depending on where you um, go. And sometimes you even get the lids with them. And I also like painting the lids. Sometimes you get like a rounded lid because this is the way they're sitting on the tree. And sometimes they're flat like this, but what I do is I paint these right up and make it pretty. And you could use your regular drill bit and drill holes in here, hang it with some twine, and um, quick, easy, fun project. Um, we're going to do the bucket tonight, and I'm just going to put these aside, but get the lids if you can get the lids too. Hi, Karen and Lisa. Everybody's so, I have my iPad so far away. I guess I need stronger glasses. Thanks for joining. Say hello when you come on and give some likes and loves. Um, all right, so we're gonna be painting with my most favorite color in the world. I try not to do every project with it, but we're gonna be doing Mermaid Tail. Isn't that pretty? It's just such a pretty turquoise color. And I know from doing this in the past that all you have to do to prep your bucket is clean it really well because the DIY paint sticks to this. Um, we're gonna do one coat and then um, some big top sealer and then put a transfer right over it. Uh, and it works really well. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to sand them or do any like special prep. We're just gonna paint right over a clean bucket. Isn't this an awesome color? It's totally my favorite. I get stuck. Um, I, I have to say that I'm guilty of painting the same color over and over and over again. I use Mermaid Tail, Bohemian Blue, and I've just recently started using a lot of Hay Sail. It's like my new favorite. I know I need to just branch out, right? All right, so now this is kind of, um, this is kind of, I'm gonna say like a rustic kind of a project. So um, in all the buckets that I've done like this, it, it's been, my paint has been, in one coat, it doesn't quite cover, you're gonna get brush strokes. But I like that because the transfers also have some distressing and it's kind of, you know, it kind of gives like that farmhouse look and I'm cool with that. And also one coat of this paint, before I get my shirt in it, it dries pretty quickly. Hello everyone, thanks for coming on. How many, have any of you done this project yet? I've seen um, a few of them floating around, pictures of them floating around the different sites. Um, you could use any, really anything. Um, they look uh, really cool on those like tall metal flower buckets. I've only just started and I'm covered in paint. I don't know where I picked that up. Um, but when you're done with it, you could have like a pretty wastebasket or what I'm gonna do with mine, some of them I put in the shop to sell, but what I'm gonna do with, with mine is put a um, plant in it or a, a little small tree. Probably like already potted not to put in this. 
I think I need to move the, um, my iPad a little closer because I can't, I can't read your comments. Every time I go to my eye doctor, ever since I turned 40, I've got one all he says is, yeah, that's what happens when you start getting old. And he just gives me a stronger prescription. All right, that was pretty quick. Luckily, I've got one all painted and dried for us so we can move on and then come back to this one. I'm going to wipe my hands and then I'm going to move my iPad closer so I can read your comments and answer questions. I had no idea that it was so far away. All right, so I'm going to put this aside to dry. And I'm going to grab my iPad. All right. Hey, look at everybody. <laughs> crazy okay so yeah the bucket is called a sap bucket so here in New Hampshire um, the bucket is used it's put against um, maple trees and they um, tap the trees with with um, a metal piece I think it's called a tap um, and they hook what they hook um, like plastic piping up to it and the sap from the tree falls out into the bucket and that's what they used to make maple syrup with um, so I'm in New Hampshire, New Hampshire and Vermont, the buckets are very plentiful. Um, I also have customers who have ordered them online to do just this project. Um, okay, so this bucket I painted yesterday. Hello, in summer crush. <laughs> and it's been sealed with Big Top, okay? Yeah, I mermaid tail on an old desk, I'm sure. Actually, I would, I'm going to get fingerprints and mermaid tail on this. That's totally fine, right? I don't care. Um, um, I did not have a wet brush, Kristen. I just used um, my Klingon brush. I, I um, squeezed all the water out, and I just painted it straight on. You don't need to water it down. You could do two coats if you want, but you're going to find that you don't have to. I'll show it to you after we apply the transfer on here. I'm going to go back to the uh, mermaid tail one and show you how it looks. Okay, so this one is already painted. I'm going to be using um, one fourth of this transfer from IOD, and it's called Ladies in Waiting. And there's four different florals there, and they're they're um, made like the inspiration is like the old botanics, and they're they're really pretty. So um, I've got a couple cut out. You can help me choose which one looks better against the orange. Um, April, the buckets, well, it depends on where you live. Um, there are customers of mine who have um, ordered the buckets. Um, and if, actually, if you go to my um, Facebook page, which is Serendipity House LLC, um, I will post on there where I know some of my customers have bought them. I, um, I can't remember the name of the company offhand because I just pick them up around here. Okay, so we have this. But you could use any, you could use like just a galvanized bucket. You could probably go and get one really. All right, you guys are going to help me choose. This yellow over the orange crush or the other one I have already cut out is the red over the orange crush. I don't really want to remove the backings. I'm going to, I'm going to say either color is going to look good because um, all of the colors against, I, I do DIY and IOD together all the time and all the colors and all of the transfers look fabulous together. So I was thinking yellow, what do you guys, no sap buckets in Texas. Oil cans, yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could do a, like a big, a big oil jug, right? All right, I am going to do the yellow, I think, because I feel like oh, one yellow, one red another red all right another red up oh, it's gonna be red the red wins all right put that down on the ground all right I have a feeling all right so here's how I do these um, I think they're gonna be used just on the ground the sap buckets have a little hole right there can you see it where it was where it was attached to the tree to catch all the sap so I'm going to do, have that be the back in case somebody decides they want to hang this bucket 
and because that's already there built in, right? And so this is going to be the front. I'm, I'm only going to do one part of a transfer. I'm not going to go all the way around because you won't see the back anyway. All right, so this has been sealed, painted with orange crush, and sealed with big top. Now we're going to do a transfer, and I think I'm going to have to cut this. I think it's going to be a little long, but let's see. All right, so I'm going to cut the bottom and then I'm going to tape it on because I also have found that doing uh, this on metal is a little more challenging than doing it on wood. Um, metal and glass is a little harder because it's not really, you're not going into something that's as absorbent. Um, but also this curved surface makes it a little challenging. All right, so I've got these grids here, and I'm gonna just choose my line near the bottom and cut right across on the grid. And I save all my extra pieces. As a matter of fact, when I get done, if I feel like this needs to fill, filling in, I've got a whole bunch of extra pieces aside. I'm sorry. <coughs> Excuse me, get a little frog in my throat. And um, actually the rocker that you see beside, behind me has, um, I was working on that today. It's got um, a whole bunch of leftover from one transfer, all cut up and used on it. And I just kind of piece them together because waste not, want not. Okay, so after you take this off of your backing, you want to put it on. Now, and I'm going to tape it. Now with this, it's a little forgiving. It's not like a piece of furniture where you're going to stand back and notice if it's a little bit crooked. Um, you know, it's a bucket. Hello, hello. Ooh, bees and honeycomb. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. All right, glad you guys like the red. I was listening. I was listening, so I chose the red. going to, there we go. So none of you have done any of these before. I've seen so many, I thought this was kind of, uh, I was wondering if it was going to be too popular of a project to do, but um, I'm glad that maybe you guys haven't seen this demonstrated before. Okay, there's that. Inside of your um, transfer, you're going to get a little stick like this. So once this is taped on here, um, you can't move it around because parts of it are already sticky. So you've, I've committed to this. This is where it's staying. I'm going to take my stick and I'm going to start rubbing. And this is probably actually picking up kind of loud. Hopefully it's not too annoying. Michelle, um, where, um, Moon, where do, you, where do you live? It just moved up on me, so I saw the name Michelle. You're saying um, buckets buckets are 50 to $75? Where do you live? Or are you saying transfers? I don't know. Either way, that's expensive for either one of those. All right, I am going to... Um, I don't want it to move around too much, but I want to show you guys how to once I start getting it on, how to get an air bubble in there, which is really kind of hard to demonstrate. Also, because of where I am, um, and I'm getting used sap buckets. So these are, if you order these online, and um, I can tell you where to get them from, if you just go to, I would love it if you gave me a like and followed me on my Facebook page, Serendipity House. Um, but if you order them like that, I'm pretty sure they're sending new ones. Here, we're getting like the used ones that are banged up and rusty inside, and I actually kind of like that. So I said that because I'm feeling all the dings <laughs> as I'm pressing this thing here. What is expensive there, Moon, though? Are you saying the buckets or the transfers, and where do you live? Help me out. Um, you can buy, other than the bucket, all the other products that I'm using, you can get um, on my website, serendipity.house. So I sell the transfers and the whole DIY line. 
and the whole IOD line, uh, but you're on your own to find a bucket. All right, I want to get this part on, and then I'm going to try to show you. I think I can show you here. All right, so can you see how these leaves right here, down here, look darker than these? Well, that's because these are already, the ones that are lighter are already separated from my back, my um, plastic or my backing here, which means there's a little air bubble in there. So when you're doing your transfers, if you can get behind the air bubble, you can hear it. Can you see it? You can see an, the air bubble push right over, and that is really the quickest way to get your transfer to release, is to try to catch air bubbles. my tape as I'm getting kind of further down here oh you're in Australia okay boy I don't know who we have in Australia but I can imagine that they cost a fortune and I know because I used to buy um, some products from Australia that the the, uh, the fees I think are they called duties um, are crazy high and shipping is crazy high. All right. Look at the cute little butterfly. All right. Now, this is really moving around a lot. I mean, this is not typical of using a transfer, but because I'm on a rounded surface, it is much more challenging. I'm trying to decide where to put my tape, actually, so. Yeah, shipping is crazy. Um, you can put things in the buckets uh, to drown out the sound. <laughs> Are you saying you don't want me to, like, yodel in them anymore for you? <laughs> That's funny. Let me just give you a sneak peek so you know what you're hanging around for. And I see, all right, can you, all right, so right above my finger there, that's a big air bubble. I am going to push that, and you should see this whole piece release from the paper, or from the plastic. See it? So exciting when that happens. Because it's really technique. It's not rubbing hard. You shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be sore. Although the day that I did four of these and five lids in one day, oh, my shoulders are killing me. But that's a good little trick is to just try to get the air bubble. And then it comes right up. So I can't believe it's already um, going to be Easter. It's has, This uh, spring has just like come so fast. It's crazy. Happy, happy Easter, happy Passover, whatever you celebrate. We're, we go to my parents' house um, who live locally every year, and this is the first time that um, we're not going to have an Easter hunt. All the kids are, well, the oldest is 20, and the youngest, 2 or 15, and they're all, everybody's kind of off doing their own stuff own thing so there's everybody isn't going to be there so we're not doing a hunt it's kind of sad when everybody's grown, grown up makes me feel old all right we are almost there i'm at the very end does this sound like crazy loud minutes this will be on. You're still having, you know what, it's still um, cold here and rainy and I, you know, we, New Hampshire's crazy. Well, probably like the rest of the country this time of year, we'll probably have a couple of nice 70 degree days and then we'll be bringing things in because they're freezing again. 
As a matter of fact, we, we don't even, as a rule, we don't start gardening here until, you know, putting, planting stuff outside until after Memorial Day weekend because um, you just never know when it's going to frost again. All right, I'm just getting the little bits at the end. I meant to say, I know I said that I... Um, coated this with big top, but I meant to say that um, depending on what, you know, it, this is, that's changed. Um, that I've done lots of transfers without sealing first, but I am finding that the um, transfers over DIY paint do much better. They, they release much easier if you put your sealer down first. So unless I'm doing a, a piece of furniture and I definitely want to like get the full effect of wax, um, if I want to do that, just wax, then I will not seal first on my transfer. But with everything else, I'm using the big top first and you guys are ready. And it, um, it's a much quicker process. All right, ready? I have no idea how long that took me, but it seemed like it was pretty easy. All right, so after you have it on, you want to go around and rub it with your fingers and make sure that everything is pushed down. And sometimes you can even hear like a little popping, and that means that your transfer had air in it and you're pushing all that air out. You don't want to have any air left. You want to have a good bond between the transfer and the paint. Yeah. You probably hear the rubbing and not the, not the like, it sounds kind of, you know what it sounds like? Rice Krispies. It sounds like snap, crack, a pop. Okay. Now, let's see. Is that full? I'm going to say that I, I'm going to fill in. I have some um, extra pieces over here that I picked up from something else and some other transfers. And I'm just going to rub some on. Took me 20 minutes to apply this. Okay. Thank you. So now I'm just going to put on some um, extra pieces, fill in some space, just because I have them. Um, yeah, the transfers, um, if you missed the beginning, I'm Michelle from Serendipity House. Um, would love it if you went over and gave my page a like and followed me, follow me. I do lots of tutorials with DIY paint and IOD products. Uh, and my website is serendipity.house and I sell all these products, everything that I'm working with tonight except for the actual bucket. And I'm so excited. Guess what I just got in this week, finally. Um, I got some more, um, I got some more golden ticket, which I love. And some more dark and decrepit, which has been out for a little while. All right, now I feel like I need to, you can layer these too. So I am just putting these right over where I've already got something. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to how I burnish, and we're gonna put Big Top on this to seal it. Now, I'm gonna say that um, I would leave these, you know, once everything's dried and cured, that it'd be cool to leave it out on a covered porch, but not outside in the elements. All right, um, we have, um, Cheryl, we have retailers in Canada, IOD does. If you go to their website and you look up, find a retailer and you can look for Canada and find somebody close to you. Whoops, this is what the back looks like. This is like a before and after. All right, so I'm trying to decide if that's enough. I think it is, I mean, you can only see so much from the front, it looks full enough. Okay, so here is how I burnish. 
Um, I use, first of all, you need to make sure, if you miss this part, you need to press it all in with your fingers to get a really good seal on there between the transfer and the paint. I use these, um, the steel wool, 0000 steel wool. It's white, it's very fine. Um, and so I use that in little circles. Now it's per perfectly white now. Usually it picks up little pieces. So I just go in little circles and this is pushing it into the paint and also picking up if there's any lo little loose edges folded up or that didn't adhere all the way down. And you can't always tell until you do this. It's gonna pick those up. You know what else these are awesome for? Oh, look. It's coming out too bright, but I can, there's little dots on there where it's picking up. Um, I love when I paint with the texture with my DIY paint, I love to put dark wax right on here and rub it right in. It, it has, um, it, it just like catches the texture and does this really great effect. All right, so this definitely is picking some up. And some of it did come off my, my although it just looks like bright light to me when I do that. Then you blow on it. All right, we're gonna do our big top next. All right, so I'm gonna use my big top. And that's what I have underneath this too. Um, yes, before the transfer, I used one coat of Summer Crush. So it's just one coat. You can see through on some spots, but I think, can you see where um, it's, a, it's a little translucent? You know, one coat doesn't cover it totally. Like if it was furniture, that would be, you would do two coats. But I think given what this project is, and that the inside is still unfinished and the bottom. Um, and it's definitely, a, quite obviously, a used sat bucket. One coat of paint is fine for this. And then um, the big top, let that dry. And then, or, and then you do the transfer and then big top again. Okay, I stir my big top. See these, these sticks that come, that I just applied the transfer with? Multi-use makes a great stirrer. Okay, I just want to show you this before I, thank you Kristen, you're so sweet. <laughs> See how, this is the one that we just painted. It's drying. So probably what I'm going to do, otherwise this will be a super short live, is hit it with a heat gun after we're done sealing. <sighs> Maybe I had to wash my hands. All right. Cling on brush in my big top. Um, Robin, the um, steel wool, sometimes you can find them at the hardware store. I cannot find them at the hardware store, so I get mine off. <clears throat> I hate to say it. Amazon. I hate sending them business. They're putting all of us little places out of business. Um, if I had a place nearby, I certainly would buy them locally. Um, I've got some on my website too. I think I do. But I bought mine from Amazon. All right, so just a single coat. And actually what I what you're gonna notice, I notice every time I go back and, and do this, there's gonna be some spots on here that are like a darker orange. And I think that is where my top coat didn't soak all the way through before. You see those the specks of darker orange coming up? Yeah. So I'm glad it's good to be doing this because this is sealing where it apparently missed before. Oh, you can get them at Home Depot, Cheryl. So Cheryl says that you can find the steel wool at Home Depot. Um, I guess I had a look. I didn't know that Home Depot had it and I do have a Home Depot near here. All right, and I usually do two coats with the big top on these just because I think that, um, well, first of all, I do them for my shop and then sell them. But I also think that people are, you know, they're gonna use them to, 
they'll be putting plants in them, like potted plants in them. And that means water is gonna be around them. Certainly they're not waterproof or maybe not even really water resistant, but I feel better just doing two coats. Making sure I have some drips here. I'm getting the drips. All right. Every time I spin, I'm seeing a new drip. Drips drive me crazy, I gotta say. And on this, the drips, you can see, um, it's kind of a milky white, so they're pretty easy to catch. Okay, oh, that looks really pretty. Um, I am, um, other than, as I said before, using mermaid tail, which is on the mirror behind me in the bucket that we just did, um, these are great little small things to do pops of color with because I tend to do all blues. All right, I am going to put this aside over here on the stool and let it dry. And then this one, I am gonna do the heat gun, which usually I find when I do that, it's fine, it's not too loud for you guys, but then we can, um, well then both of them have big top at the same time. My power does not. All right. This really does dry pretty fast. I think, what time is it? So I did this half an hour ago. These are the spots that probably had too thick of paint on them. I can see brush strokes, so that's why it's not dry yet. I can paint one of the lids too, I guess. Yeah, that's on pretty thick right there. I, you know, I like the different shades too. I was thinking about maybe doing a multicolor um, of this, like doing some blending, but sometimes you don't have to get so fancy. I think keeping these simple is probably the best way to go. Usually how I, last time how I did this is I had four of these and five lids, I think, and I just kind of did kind of go like a production line, and by the time you're done with the fourth one, the first one's ready to get to again. But I think for something that you can get for five to ten dollars, depending on where you live and where you're buying it, um, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good bang for your buck. I think I'm going to take two of these and put them out on my front porch and put some, um, you know, potted plants in them. Now the question is going to be if I do two flanking the doorway, do they need to be the same color background? I don't know. I can be kind of anal about that. I'd probably have to do it and then look at it and see what I think. <laughs> All right, so I got a big chunk there. It's not drying. It is great for a planter. And I can see through this pretty, all right, that's the only spot right there. I'm gonna go ahead and big top this and then we'll dry big top on the other one. So I was saying that we were going to um, my parents' house for Easter. And um, it's, it's going to be a small kind of event this year. Um, but my favorite thing to do on Easter, and this should be turning off this by itself in a minute. Um, this is going to sound really weird because I probably in the minority, but I want to know what you think. Um, my favorite Easter tradition is making um, a pot of baked beans. And I'm looking for the comments. Yeah, I, love I hated baked beans when I was a kid, and I remember having them since I was a kid. Um, my grandmother used to always make them, and when I got married, which was 21 years ago, I'm going to put my big top on this now, and you're going to see the color deepen, and it's going to be awesome. Um, anyways, when I so when I got married. 21 years ago, my grandmother bought me um, my own bean pot. 
and she gave me her recipe. And so I have her recipe in her writing, and um, which is the recipe that I use at a bean pot. And my grandmother's been gone for three years, I think, two or three years. She was 93, 92. I have a really bad memory. I'm sure some family is gonna come on here and correct me. Um, but, okay, here, I've got a tip for you. I'm interrupting myself. Um, and this is, normally I wouldn't do this this quickly, but because um, I'm doing um, a demo, I'm trying to speed things up. So I'm putting my big top on, and can you see where the paint's lifting? It's because I just did this a half an hour ago. So ideally, what you would do is put your paint on, let it dry. Um, last time I did it, it probably dried like maybe four hours. If you can do it the next day, even better. Um, you know, because it needs time to dry and adhere. And I didn't give it that. So this will be fine. It's still gonna look beautiful. But if you don't want your paint to lift, then you need to give it dry time. Um, okay, so anyways, my grandmother gave me her recipe and a bean pot. So, um, gosh, even when she was still alive a few years ago, she would stopped cooking and she didn't have a kitchen and so I would make the beans. But um, yeah, it just makes me think of her, of having cooking her recipe and making baked beans. So, that's what my contribution to dinner is going to be this year and every year is beans. Okay. <laughs> you like baked beans, but you like Reese's eggs. After you eat your baked beans, you can have as many Reese's eggs as you want. <laughs> you gotta eat your beans and your ham first. Okay. gonna hit this with the heat gun so we can move along um, yeah I don't know it's like baked beans and ham is the traditional dinner at, um, with my family is that what do other people have of course when that's what you have you think that's what like everybody has I remember um, I only know heard this story but because I didn't know my husband uh, then but he apparently talked his mother into making chop suey for Easter dinner one year instead of ham. And I'm pretty sure he was just kidding to see if he could talk her into it, and she did it because you know she does everything he asks. And then everybody complained because there was no ham; it was just chop suey. So pretty. You hate baked beans. You know what? I hate. <laughs> Kristen's going to have her, Reese, her Reese's first. Because that's true. You know what? what at, after you're 50 and I'm, I'm half there myself, you can have dessert for dinner and go backwards or just never even have the veggies at all if you want. I, I remember when I first moved out of my house, when I was, uh, it took um, a few years off before I went to college and then graduate school. Um, but the first, I moved in with my best friend, we're 18, and the first thing that we did is we, we had chocolate cake and coffee all the time for breakfast. Until you realize that, like, okay, that makes you kind of sick to your stomach for the whole day. But the point is, is that I could do it, and I did do it. It also doesn't give you much energy. Um, the metal gets quite hot with the heat gun. You're sweet. 52. There's lumps in here from my bent up. I want to like try to hurry up and do a transfer on that other bucket. I'm going to paint my lids 
my sap lids, the turquoise, where I have it out, the mermaid tail. So great. If you guys do this project, I'm waiting for my heat gun to turn off. It's on cool. If you guys do this project or any of the projects that you saw today on the DIY page, you can hashtag it. I'm going to peek at my notes here so I get the hashtag right. Hashtag DIY paint Easter under 20. Hashtag it. DIY paint Easter under 20. And you might get featured on the DIY page, which would be pretty cool because there's a lot of people on here. All right. I would love to see you guys do these. You know what I love is that if you give people all the same products, no two projects ever come out looking the same. Um, even if you give them the same color paint or the same IOD products. I did a workshop last week and every single one that people did um, with the D, they were courageous too. Like they were trying um, white wax, dark wax, and black wax, and they have never waxed before, and they were like amazing. The DIY wax, uh, usually that's, I love waxing, it's my, it's my jam. I love shading and waxing, um, not for this project though. Um, and they did an amazing job and they weren't scared of it and it got into all the little nooks and crannies and it was pretty awesome. Now I'm running out of space. I gotta, I gotta move this over here. All right, if you missed the beginning, I was telling everyone that oftentimes when you get the sap buckets, you can get lids. I just painted one, like a domed lid, which is usually what's over the sap bucket, or flat lids. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint this and I'll put a transfer on it probably tomorrow. And you can use your drill, just your regular drill bit. Drill two holes, hole there, hole here, and use twine to hang it. And it makes a pretty, you know, cute little piece of decoration. Hey Susan, how are you? This is totally gonna make a mess. So we've got, let's see what time, I went on at six. So I'm gonna be done a little bit before seven, let you guys have a little break. Go get yourself a beverage or something. And then after me, um, Talisha Reynolds from Reynolds Custom Creations is coming on. Um, I'm not sure what she's doing, but I'm sure it's gonna be a fabulous, fun project. And um, we're on live tonight until um, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock Eastern. So stay tuned and if you missed any of the videos or if there's any that you want to go back and see again, um, under the video section on the DIY page here, you can find all the videos. You know, if you know me, if you go follow my page, you're gonna see that I make a mess. Actually, this is quite tame for me. I drop things, I spill things, I make mistakes, I show you what not to do. It's so totally helpful. Um, <laughs> I like to keep it real. All right. I'm stuck with everything wet, you guys. I don't know what to do. Do you guys have any questions? You need to, do you have sap buckets um, where you are, Susan? Are they easy to find? I've got um, five or six of these at the shop in all different colors, and they are so total, they are so pretty next to each other need to fill them you know you, I'm sure you guys find um, those of you who have stores or I don't I don't if you're creative and you might not get this unless you have a shop because you just get it um, people don't understand you have to like show them what they can do with things so if I right now I just have these sitting out I need to put like potted plants in them or I need to crumble up a bunch of paper and drop it in so that they can say oh a wastebasket or or oh hey I could I could put my um, potted rose bush in that, or my, my big rosemary topiary. Um, what is a sap bucket? Sasha, a sap bucket is, um, I'm in New Hampshire, so in New Hampshire and Vermont, at least I know in New Hampshire and Vermont, I'm not sure um, where else, 
but the sap bucket, so this is a sap bucket, it's basically galvanized steel. It's got a hole in the back right here where it hangs on um, a tree, maple tree, and it has a tap that goes into the tree and um, then they're all connected with plastic tubing. And so the sap from the tree drops into the bucket and gets filled with sap and then they boil it down in a process and that's where we get maple syrup. So the sap bucket is what catches the sap to make maple syrup. You could do this on um, any, um, any kind of you know, bucket or the, the, my goal for tonight was to show you something that you could do for under $20 and these cost between five and $10 here where I am. Um, usually five, really, because you can go get used ones, with, which work just as great. All right, I think instead of chit-chatting, <laughs> because I don't know what else to talk about, I know I'm done a little early, but everything's drying, and I don't want to rush it because um, this is this is drying. But you already saw what happened when I rushed it there, so um, I'm going to do the transfer on this one tomorrow. And I'll post it on my page. So head on over to Serendipity House LLC. Give me a like and a follow. If you want to do this project and share it on the DIY page, give a hashtag to, at um, DIY Paint Easter under 20. That's the hashtag, okay? And then you could get featured to be on the DIY page. All right, so um, Go to the bathroom, grab, your, grab yourselves a drink, and then at 7 p.m., Talisha Reynolds is coming up uh, with another great project. So we got two more hours of um, projects here on the DIY page. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope you guys learned something, and I hope I inspired you to go try a new project. Have a great night. Happy Easter. Happy Passover. I have to get to my off button there. Bye.